Support the channel by becoming a channel member or joining the Patreon through patreon.com slash manlightfoot. I have procured my learner's permit. Who is adulty McMahon face? The better question is, are you a narc? What? So DreamWorks dropped their latest installment of their more recent franchise's Trolls Band Together, third in what became a runaway hit trilogy based on the old toys that gave plenty of kids nightmares. To be honest, at first, I didn't think there was much to the Trolls franchise when I saw the first movie, but as you saw with my Trolls 2 video, I got proven wrong. It sucks you in with its charming style and flair that you can't help but love it. Not to mention the music they put their trussies into. What? The movies are very unashamed to be as goofy as they want and you have to respect them for it. These movies clearly strike some type of chord <gasps> with people and the third one is no exception. I didn't know what to expect out of this movie when I saw the trailers for it. The second movie got me way on board for the franchise with improving over the first so the third did have some shoes to fill. Does it keep the streak going? Well. I feel it exceeds pretty well by mainly being the one that basically doesn't give a crap in all the right ways. So what happens to our favorite trolls in this one? Well it turns out our favorite Justin Timberlake sounding troll branch was part of a boy band called Brozone with his four other brothers who aren't played by NSYNC. But We'll get into that later. One day while Branch and Poppy were attending their Bergen friend's wedding, Branch's distant brother John Dory comes for a visit. He warns Branch about one of their other brothers named Floyd being kidnapped. Now Branch, Poppy, and John Dory must reunite with the two remaining brothers, Clay and Spruce, and reform the band to rescue Floyd from some noodly Betty Spaghetti pop idols. My doubts when it came to this film honestly was the long lost brothers angle, I'ma be real. Considering they weren't mentioned in the first movie, from what I remember, it could easily come across as DreamWorks running out of ideas. But the boy band angle is what propels the story up, the main reason being the drama between them and also the trauma of the brothers abandoning Branch when he was a baby. It's of course emulating the whole boy band's breaking up angle, but it has a stronger meaning here because it also means their family is breaking up. It puts a nice layer to the tensions of the brothers. They're so wrapped up in perfecting their style that they forgot why they're doing this in the first place. They sadly tried to commodify their own family, which just added an unnecessary strain on their brotherhood. You feel for Branch because he was betrayed by the few people he had to count on in his life. Not to mention the loss of his own grandmother. And if you think that's a spoiler for the first movie, then it's amazing how you avoided meme culture for so long. Yeah, I'm willing to bet you didn't think there was some complexity when it comes to the Trolls franchise of all things, but like I said in the second one, this franchise has some secrets up its sleeves. Now, is all that said intentional in a movie where sucking a pacifier is considered taking a hit? Who knows? I do know that this one movie wanted to be as much fun as possible. They always prided themselves on not being too serious save for that mean moment in the first one. Here, there's that random humor that doesn't feel like it's the lull kind. They throw jokes your way that you wouldn't expect them to. Some are definitely beyond the type you'd expect out of Trolls of all things. They have a good sense of edge for some of these that act as a good wake up to the type of movie you're gonna get. The characters are in top form for this. Poppy and Branch are still that adorable couple that we've come to expect them to be. Thankfully, it's not a question mark of whether or not they are together in this one like it was the second one. All the Broppy shippers rejoice but obviously their dynamic is cute with how it's done. They act more settled into each other by this point in the franchise. You get a feeling these two are partners in crime and they are adorable for it. I really love how much they have Poppy fangirling over Branch and Brozone in general. It's just so freaking adorable. There's just all these little quirks to how much she can just be such a fangirl and it's just great. She's just a little ball of energy that you can't help but chuckle a bit at her quirks. Branch is down to earth as always, but still a big dork. He still puts on the facade of the guy who's trying not to care, but obviously does. It's put on here, but because he's masking away from his brothers. He doesn't want to let himself be tricked into thinking that his brothers are back and things are going to be all happy again. Their dynamic plays out pretty well with them being the bickering brothers and all. You do feel bad for how things turned out for them and wish they make amends by the end. The brothers themselves are pretty good with the fact that they all feel fairly distinct from each other. You won't get a feeling of, oh, they're just the boy brand that I just don't care about either member of. You actually can tell which one is which, be it design wise or just how they carry themselves. They have that boy band trope slash joke of them being generic personality types, but of course there's depth 
to them. That's what helps make them interesting. You can distinguish between all of them pretty well. I mean, just how much the fans talk about each one of them individually makes it clear they're pretty distinct from one another. Though, I will say it annoyed me to find out that the brothers weren't play by NSYNC. Why? Literally a missed opportunity that just felt like it was right there, but don't worry, you still get your NSYNC reunion, it's just not in the way you think they would go for. Now, there's a certain character that they introduced that was spoiled pretty heavy in the trailers. Viva is Poppy's long lost sister, and I can just blurt that out because they really didn't care to hide it in the trailer. I mean, it's made obvious in the movie too, but you know... Give me some mystery, damn it. Viva is a good, fun character overall. She kinda is just poppy, but bigoted. I'm leaving it at that. Gotta leave y'all with some mystery to her since the trailers dropped the ball. I will say her story has done well to get across the message they were going for. Bridget and King Gristle make a return from the first film after being left behind in the second one. These two are adorable slash funny. They're just that newlywed couple that's living their best life. Bridget taking the lead gets so many good laughs from me. She just carries herself with the vigor of someone who got what she wanted and is just cruising through life now. Gristle is just along for the ride and you cannot blame him. The man just looks so happy traveling around with his girl. It's great to see them return and add some good jokes to this movie. And they even play a good part in the story overall and it helped the message stand stronger. Now, if you told me there were gonna be Betty Spaghetti-like villains for this third film, I would have told you that's normal. But for real, Velvet and Veneer are a good villain duo. They're these brother slash sister pop idols that steal talent from trolls to use on themselves to reach stardom. Basically, they're Millie Vanilli. They have this spoiled rich kid attitude that is so over the top you can't help but love how much of saucy bitches they can be. They just chew up the scene whenever they're on screen. Now, a few old trolls from previous movies make a return here like Tiny Diamond from the second. He's made more prominent this time around with good laughs as he's pretty much acting as the driver for them to get to and from places, which, you know, teaching good lessons about children driving. Though I do have to say rip to my man Cooper, who sadly got snuffed out of this movie. Guess they got tired of trying to figure out whatever the hell he was supposed to be. Now, this being a Trolls movie, you gotta talk about the animation. This definitely was the best looking out of all the movies. There's so much usage of camera movements and musical transitions to a point you feel like you're in a long running music video with different sequences happening. But it actually is cohesive and makes sense. It's just visual engagement all throughout the movie. The detailing on the textures makes you want to touch every surface. They utilize unique looking characters heavy with all the different character designs they have. From regular trolls to Betty Spaghetti to even puppetry crazy enough the money is always on screen as you watch. This one I think is the one they wanted to really flaunt what can be done with 3D texturing and camera movements and honestly it pays off very well. The music has always been a strong point for this franchise and there's no exceptions here. The way they transition into different melodies and tempos is just flawless. You're gonna get these songs in your head especially with it being a jukebox musical like always. There's use of old songs and using new lyrics or mixing lyrics to add a layer to them that makes it seem like you just discovered these old it's for the first time. Overall, this is a great third installment to a franchise that knows how to improve each time. I have my doubts when a new one comes out whether or not it can be good as the last one and it goes past my expectations. The characters are all fun and enjoyable to watch. You get good humor from their back and forth as much as you would from the big visual gags they have. There's a hint of edge to it that gives it a tinge of grit. The music is infectious with how catchy it is and energized it can be. It's an absolute visual treat you'll want to give yourself. This movie pretty much solidified another strong trilogy for DreamWorks. This movie was just pure unadulterated musical fun and that's one tune we can sing along to.